All right, welcome back to my jungle setup where I like to record these things and uh, to day three of PlatformCon 2024. I hope you've been having a fantastic time and been learning a lot about platform engineering. And today I wanted to spend a little bit of time to talk about um, a bit of a um, more controversial topic, which is what are platform engineering killed DevOps? And as I put in the description of my talk, some of you might recall the infamous DevOps is that campaign and sort of all big drama that happened about two years ago. Um, and this is the t-shirt the that is a, a reliquium a proof of that. And um, I wanted to pick that up again because that was, I think, a big moment in the industry and for the platform engineering space in general and kind of do a bit of a recap what did it mean? What does it even mean now? Um, does it mean anything? Um, and and so looking at a bit of the past and of the future and where we're going. So with that, um, I want to actually start with uh, a quick walk down memory lane um, about DevOps specifically, right? So if you uh, look back and kind of, okay, where did this whole thing start, right? Um, it started with this guy, among others, Werner Fogels, who in 2006 launched AWS. And when he did, he famously yelled on stage, you build it, you run it. And that became sort of the core tenet of uh, DevOps, right, of the DevOps culture. And, you know, if you fast forward uh, a couple of years, you had uh, Patrick Dubois, who then coined the actual term DevOps. And, um, you know, you can see there that, that when, when that started kind of like bubbling up and then the trend really picked up, picked up, picked up and kind of went vertical after that. Um, and so, you know, DevOps in theory was a great idea. This idea of you build it, you run it, sh shift it left. You can't just simply throw your code over the fence and have someone else taking care of that. As a developer, you should um, be responsible not just, for, not just for creating applications, but also for operating them. So great idea in theory. Um, and it works, but it doesn't work at scale, right? So let's say that you're 10, 15, 20 engineers, everybody is relatively senior, everybody's comfortable handling your Helm charts or Terraform and IEC scripts, all these things, right? You are familiar with your toolchain end to end, then fantastic. You can totally do DevOps. You can both be in charge of uh, creating code, of running it, and so on and so forth. The issue though is that doesn't really scale, right? It doesn't scale to an enterprise size uh, type of engineer, engineer organization, and it doesn't really work when you're combining that size with an increasingly complex cloud native or hybrid tool chain, right? What ends up happening instead is that you have developers that are not familiar with everything, right? With the entire tool chain end to end and end up being stuck. They need to wait either on a more senior colleague um, who will end up doing some sort of shadow ops, as we call it, or will have to usually, in most cases, wait on the infrastructure and operations teams who are then themselves blocked and will end up, uh, you know, constantly trying to put off fires and fighting all this incoming requests and ticket ops. And this in general just creates a lot of friction and um, is a setup that, you know, lacks automation, lacks standardization, uh, and in general, that is not very pleasant to work with. And the first companies to realize that were the sort of large tech companies, right? If you look back 10, 15 years ago, we're really talking about, you know, the Airbnbs, the Spotify's of the wor this, this world, who literally were onboarding hundreds of developers a month to an increasingly complex cloud native or hybrid tool chain and realize, hey, I can't expect my new junior front end to understand everything that's going on um, and, and, and also do their job, right? I need to build some sort of platform layer here in between my developers and operations teams. And that's really where platform engineering started, right? Um, about 10 years ago or so, um, it wasn't really called that, but that's what people were doing. They were building platforms um, to shield developers from this complexity and reduce the cognitive load on the individual contributor. And that has been now trickling down to mainstream in the last five or 10 years, right? 
Um, and especially in the last three or four years, you can see a pretty big acceleration. You know, testament to that is this very community that you're part of, right? There are over 20,000 people in the platform engineering meetup groups all over the world, across 30 groups at this point, I think almost in every continent. Um, there are, I don't know how many by Wednesday when you watch this, what is 21, 22,000 people in the platform engineering Slack, actual practitioners or share the worst stories and uh, best practices and, and engage every day. And um, we're expecting over 50,000 views from this year's platform conference. Right? And that, that's up massively from just years ago, right? Like if you think about the attendees, PlatformCon 22 had, I think, 6,000 attendees. PlatformCon 23 last year had 22,000. And then this year we're expecting 35,000, right? So you can really see this crazy compounding um, year over year. And uh, that's not the only thing, right? Like very established players like Gartner have picked it up in 2022. They put it on for the first time on the hype cycle. They called it, they called platform engineering a top strategic trend to watch for 2023 and actually also 2024 this year, right? And I really think if you if you kind of uh, look back, if you rewind, the the one of the big catalysts was actually this big Dallas is dead conversation, right? Um, it actually all started with Sid Palace, who's a, a very nice guy and established uh, YouTuber that covers uh, the cloud native space and so on. And he interviewed Humanitech CTO Chris Stevenson um, and kind of came out of that interview very enthusiastic, um, shall we say, and, and, and sort of, you know, tweeted out, Dubs is that long live platform engineer. And then people just started going crazy about it, right? Um, the, this article, uh, Dubs is that embrace platform engineer, was actually, I think, the most read article on the news stack, I think, ever, uh, definitely in that year. Um, and then so many people just picked it up and everybody was discussing, hey, is Delps is that? Is Delps that? Is Delps not that? What's happening? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I think this was a very important moment. It did make a lot of people mad, I think, for very good reasons, because it was a lot of people that were like, hey, I'm a Delps engineer. I'm not that. Like, what's going on? Um, um, and obviously, you know, Delps is that is a very inflammatory, very clickbaity type of thing. Um, that was very helpful to actually spread that message very, very quickly um, and have the conversation, right? But obviously, just getting the kind of, hey, Dubs is that with no context um, is also not particularly helpful, right? Um, and this is what I want to get into um, today um, a little bit later. But what's interesting is if you look at the, the, the same curve that we were looking at, right? This like DevOps um, search term that was really uh, compounding year over year ever since then, right? If you look about February, 2022, July, 2022, when that's that, that 2022 really, when, when that uh, whole thing happened, right? Since then we have about a 20% drop in volume, right? And so what does that mean? Does it mean that we actually killed DevOps? No. It absolutely does not mean that. Um, I think quite the opposite, in fact, but you can start seeing a sentiment shift, right? Whether that is a Forrester um, analysts that are putting on the LinkedIn bio, Dubs is okay, but what's next? Or just a few months ago, very intense questions and conversations about this topic on Reddit. And I mean, from my personal experience, I mean, I have a lot of anecdotes, but there is one that sticks out just a few weeks ago. I was speaking with somebody very um, reputable, actually very respected in the space from one of the very large uh, cloud providers who was saying, you know, at this point, DevOps is actually closing as many doors, at least as it opens um, when you're trying to position things and, and, and craft messaging and so on. And so I do think there is a sentiment change that is underway. And I think that really reflects this reality, which is DevOps burnout exists, right? It's a real thing and we really need to talk about it and we need to address it. Um, and, you know, it's it's fine if you're, I think you can see it, like there, there have been a lot of vendors in this play, in the, in, the, in the space that were very reticent about this messaging, right? They were very... Uh, feisty about it. They were like, hey, no, DevOps is absolutely not that and so on. Um, but it's very interesting when you actually then end up talking with the sort of enterprise practitioners or people that actually don't sell DevOps, but do DevOps. They they really, you know, um, 
felt touched by this message, whether it was DevOps' dad or DevOps burnout and so on, um, right? It, it was really this idea of like, yeah, something is broken and we need to address it. And platform engineering can really help with that, right? And Patrick Dubois, right? Um, we mentioned it earlier. Um, he was the one that coined the term actually in a recent Q&A with the new stack said platform engineering is a manifestation of DevOps, right? And I couldn't agree more. I think uh, platform engineering is, couldn't be further from this layer of DevOps, uh, couldn't be further from the DevOps killer, is actually a, a DevOps enabler, right? So again, DevOps just, you know, this first incarnation of DevOps doesn't really scale for this new cloud native era or even hybrid, right? You have all this, um, you know, enterprises that in the last last five, five years ago were like, hey, I need to go full cloud and so on 100% and then realize actually mm, halfway through, I really need like more of a hybrid setup. Um, but whether you're fully cloud, whether you're hybrid and you have this like complex brownfield enterprise reality, DevOps just doesn't do the job at an enterprise scale, right? Um, you need to build an internal developer platform that bridges the gap between developers and operations team that enables true developer self service and that enables true DevOps, true you build that you run it, right? Um, and and so while you know, I think DevOps is actually reincarnating through platform engineering, and we're and and um, it's it's going to keep living through platform engineering, DevOps itself, by itself, I think might, might be on the decline or starting to be on the decline, right? Um, I really think we have potentially seen the, the top here, the peak. And what's more interesting is if you plot the two curves that we looked at together, right? If you overlay the platform engineering um, trend over DevOps, actually you can see that uh, platform engineering is progressively going, um, is, is kind of like following the same trend, even a little bit steeper, right? Um, and so this, I think, is extremely exciting. If we look ahead, we are just getting started, right? Um, you know, at this point, platform engineering is very established. You have a lot of enterprises out there that are building their internal developer platforms. Otherwise, you're really risking of falling behind. But it's we're still just at the beginnings, right? There's still it's still a wild west. There's still so many, um, you know, things to define. Um, which is why, by the way, I think this community is so important in establishing the right blueprints, like reference architectures, the right standards and processes, like minimum viable platforms. It is super important that we get this right because platform engineering is a ton of potential, and we're just getting started. And I think this community is a big part of that. And I could not be more excited for what, for what the future holds. And so those are my thoughts. Um, that's, I think, uh, where we are right now. It is super exciting and uh, it's super exciting. And I'm very excited to be discussing this in this Slack later. So bring your questions. Uh, let's debate and see you there.